This morning we want to pick up where the Holy Spirit dropped us off last weekend. I'm going to invite you once again to journey with me into the book of the Acts of the Apostles in the New Testament. So we may once again hear a reading from the 27th chapter of the book of Acts. Today we want to pick up midway through in verse 33. If you would join in with me, Acts chapter 27, verse 33 and following. It's our custom to ask those who are physically able to join in with us as we reverence the reading of God's holy word from Acts chapter 27, beginning in verse number 33. The New King James Version of the Bible reads as follows. And as day was about to dawn, Paul implored them all to take food, saying, Today is the 14th day you have waited and continued without food and eaten nothing. Therefore, I urge you to take nourishment, for this is for your survival, since not a hair will fall from the head of any of you. And when he had said these things, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then they were all encouraged and also took food themselves. And in all, we were 276 persons on the ship. So when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship, threw out the wheat into the sea. When it was day, they did not recognize the land, but they observed a bay with a beach onto which they planned to run the ship if possible. And they let go the anchors and let them in the sea, meanwhile loosing the rudder ropes and they hoisted the mainsail to the wind and made for shore. But striking a place where the two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the prow stuck fast and remained immovable. But the stern was being broken up by the violence of the waves. And the soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim away and escape. But the centurion, wanting to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that those who could swim should jump overboard first and get to land, and the rest, some on boards and some on parts of the ship. And so it was that they all escaped safely to land. And then verse 11 in chapter 28 reads, After three months we sailed in an Alexandrian ship whose figurehead was the twin brothers, which had wintered at the island. Do me a favor, play preacher for another time with your neighbor. Tell them, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, oh, neighbor. Sometimes, sometimes things fall apart. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Last week, Reggie, we began a journey into a series of sermon forcing us to face one of the most painful and difficult realities that many of us will journey through in life. And that is the realization that sometimes in spite of our deepest desires and highest hopes, things fall apart. It's a lesson we learned as we journeyed with Paul in the 27th chapter of the book of Acts, as Paul boards a ship bound for Rome. He's on his way to Rome that he might stand trial in the face and the presence of the emperor and that he might give testimony to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Important to remember that he gets on the ship with a destiny to stand before the emperor and testify about Jesus. And while Paul and 275 other sailors, prisoners, and soldiers are on their way to Rome, Paul receives a word from the Lord that nobody wants to hear. And the word of the Lord in the middle of that storm on that ship is, Paul, this ship ain't going to make it. The boat you're on is about to be broken. The thing you've set sail on will not make it safely to your destination. The thing you got into believing it would carry you to where you believe you ought to go. God says that thing is falling apart. And beloved, it's a reminder to us that sometimes God allows things to fall apart. It gets quiet right there because that's really not the word we come to church to hear. It's hard to hear the Lord share with you that something's falling apart. Number one, when you've had high hopes in it. When you had dreams and 
desires and you prayed for the ship. And what do you do when you begin to realize that the very thing you thought was God's will for your life is now falling apart? Nobody gets on a ship thinking it's going to fall apart. But sometimes, in spite of our highest hopes and our most sincere prayers, things fall apart. It's tough to receive that word, Terry, when, when you believe that you've got the skill set to make it work. When you believe that if you give it your best, if you throw yourself 110 in and you do everything you know how to do, that you can save what God is allowing to fall apart. And it's hard to accept things falling apart when you think you've done the best you know how to do. But sometimes in spite of our best efforts, things fall apart. It's hard to receive that word when the ship has been through so much already. All the storms you've already made it through, all the prayers you prayed, all the counseling you went through, all the therapy you engaged in, all the performing improvement plan you put yourself through, after everything you've done, you reach a point where you believe you've gone through too much for it to fall apart now. And somebody owes you a return on your investment. And yet, in spite of all you've invested, sometimes God says it's falling apart. And he tells Paul it's falling apart because, number one, you sailed in the wrong season. That those on board the boat knew winter was coming, but they wanted to get to Rome so badly that they ignored the signs that it was not time to go sail. And beloved, sometimes you can want something or someone so badly that you launch out and sail when God told you to sit still. And I want to drop it on you that the greatest enemy of discernment is desire. Because your heart can want it so badly that you ignore the signs God has given you. It says, Paul, you sailed in the wrong season and you got on the wrong ship. Remember from last week, the ship that fell apart was not one that God ordained, it's one they found. And if you ain't learned this by now in life, I'm sorry to tell you that there are two things in life, the things God has ordained and the things you find. And when you connect yourself to stuff you found that was not ordained by God, the inevitable outcome is that it must be destroyed because you are on the wrong ship. Ooh, but the good news that shouted us last week and held us all week long said, Paul, here's a word from the Lord. The ship won't make it, but you will. Well, I, I could stay right there again. That when his hand is no longer on the ship, God's hand is still on your life. And you ought to be grateful that even when the ship falls apart, God has a way of sustaining and surviving your life so you can give him glory that I made it when the ship didn't. Anybody ever been through a shipwreck? But you're still here because the hand of God was obviously on your life. You could have drowned, could have died, could have been crazy, but the Lord kept you when the ship didn't make it. Hey, God, I feel like, I, I feel like preaching there. We've been, we've been hanging out in this shipwreck, finding out that when things fall apart, there's some things you got to do. Last week, we learned that, number one, you've got to be cautious of your counsel. Mary, when things are falling apart, you can't listen to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elaine, when, when you're going through, everybody can't get in your ear. Because the devil will surround you with people who mean well, but don't know what God is doing, and will try to convince you to stay on something that God is letting fall apart. You can't listen to everybody. Number two, we saw last week that when things are falling apart, You've got to be consistent in your character. Storms tend to change you. They make you mean and bitter and ugly and don't look at nobody and nasty. 
Sometimes when things are falling apart, you can find yourself looking in the mirror and not even being able to recognize yourself. Because look what it has done to you. And when things are falling apart, that's not the time to leave your faith and to change your ways. That's the time to dig your heels in and be who God made you to be, to hold on to your joy, to hold on to your peace, to save your character, to be who God made you to be. You've got to be steadfast in who you are. If you allow me this week, there are about three more lessons that come out of this text I want to teach, and then I'll get out your way in the next 25 minutes. <laughs> when things are falling apart, be cautious of your counsel. When things are falling apart, be consistent in your character. But number three that the Lord teaches us, when things are falling apart, you've got to take care of your physical condition. You've got to learn to take care of yourself. Watch what happens, Jenny. You're going to like this. The Bible says that while the ship is falling apart, Paul recognizes the brothers on the ship have been fasting for 14 days. They have not eaten in two weeks. Now, what you ought to be asking is why are they fasting in the midst of a storm? They're fasting hoping that if they fast, they can save the ship. Because when things are falling apart, you get spiritual. When things are falling apart, you in church every Sunday. When things are falling apart, you read your Bible every morning. You pray before you get out of bed because you think if you get spiritual that you can save the ship. They're fasting, trying to hear from God. Paul shows up and this one says, listen, God has spoken. The ship ain't going to make it. Now, that's not the word you wanted to hear, but it's God's answer. The ship isn't going to make it. So watch what he says. He says, now that you know that God's letting the ship fall apart, y'all need to eat. Now that you know how it's going to go down, you got to put some nourishment in your body. Now that you know what's about to happen, you got to stop neglecting your body and start taking care of the flesh that God has given you. Don't be so spiritual that you don't take care of your body. I knew it was going to get quiet right, right around here because we talk about Bible and prayer and shout and praise, but we don't talk enough about taking care of the temple God has given us, which is why church folk are the most unhealthy folk you have ever met in life because we shout, but we don't take care of our bodies. And what Paul has recognized that I share with you is that external storms can cause internal destruction. Ooh, we that, that when the ship is falling apart, your body will start to fall apart. He said, listen, y'all ain't going to make it if you let your temple break down, if you let your body break down because stress on the outside will destroy you from the inside. Yeah, somebody been there. When, when the ship's falling apart, you lose your appetite. When the ship is falling apart, alcohol becomes an easy answer. When the ship is falling apart, blood pressure goes up. When the ship falls apart, it's hard to sleep at night. When the ship falls apart, you grab Newports from 7-Eleven. When the ship falls apart, you wind up calling folk to come over that ain't got no business coming over because you need somebody just to hold you while the ship is falling apart. And Paul says, listen, it's time for y'all to start taking better care of the body God has given you while the ship is falling apart. Yeah, I know. I know you ain't going to like this. It's time for you to get back in the gym. It's time for you to stop eating fast and fried food. It's time for you to start walking in the morning. It's time for you to put them cigarettes down, leave that alcohol on the shelf. It's time to start eating clean and living clean and taking care of the body God has given you. 
Because when the ship breaks down, you shouldn't look like you breaking down. Well, can I, can I testify right here? They say it's good for the soul, but bad on the reputation. There's a season in my life when things were falling apart all around me. And I'm telling you all, it started to affect me physically. I was losing weight. My blood pressure was through the roof. My doctor threatened to put me on blood pressure medication. My A1C was high. They diagnosed me as pre-diabetic. I started drinking at night because that's the only way I could go to sleep. And a breakthrough for me came. One Thursday at a funeral we were at out of town, Deacon Pat Johnson sitting right there saw me in the pulpit and I kept pulling my pants up because I had lost so much weight, my pants didn't fit. And I ain't a big guy anyway. <laughs> and Deacon Pat Johnson was chair John deacon. She pulled me to the side at the funeral and she said, Pastor, you're looking like what you're going through. She said, and if you lose another pound, I'm gonna force you to eat. And Deacon Johnson, I wanna thank you for letting me remember that I've got to take care of this body that God has given me. It was time to get back in the gym. It was time to start eating right. It was time to start drink, stop drinking at night. It was time to get this body back together because the word of the Lord is that when the ship is falling apart, don't let your body fall apart. When the ship is falling apart, it's not time to just be spiritual. It's time to take care of the flesh God has given you. I thank God that you prayed this morning, but did you work out as well? I thank God that you came to church on Sunday, but did you go to the doctor during the week to get your examination? Are you taking care of your body? I knew it would get quiet here, uh, but, but go get your prostate checked. Time for your mammogram. Get screened for colon cancer. Find out what your cholesterol level is. Know your A1C number. You don't even know what that stands for. Go find out what your A1C is. And Paul says, listen, you've got to take care of yourself for your survival. Watch what he says. The reason you've got to eat, the reason you've got to take care of yourself, the reason you've got to nourish yourself. Paul says this is because when the ship falls apart, y'all going to have to swim. And if you're not in shape when the ship falls apart, you're going to drown because you didn't take care of your body when your body needed you the most. I don't know who I came to preach to, but you better get ready to swim, baby, because when the ship falls apart, you still got to go to work. When the ship falls apart, you still got to provide for your family. When the ship falls apart, you still got to take care of your children. When the ship falls apart, you got to interview for another job. When the ship falls apart, you got to find you another man. You better get yourself in shape for what's coming next. Touch somebody, tell them, you better get ready to swim. You better get ready to swim. He says, take care of your physical condition because when the ship falls apart, you've got to be at your best. Mm, got to move. When the ship falls apart, Cautious of your counsel, insisting on your character, take care of your physical condition. And watch this number four. It's going to get a little quiet right here. You've got to be content with cutbacks. You've got to accept that you won't come through this with everything you had when you started. You, you, you've got, you've got to learn to live on less. You won't be balling on the other side. Come here, come here, come here. Read your Bible. Watch what happens. The ship's falling apart, and the centurion recognizes that they want to kill Paul, but he says, no, we're going to save everybody. Save Paul. And this is what he says. He said, anybody who can swim, jump out now and make your way to the shore. And the Bible says there were some who couldn't swim. 
And so they held on to broken pieces of the ship. Don't you miss it, some swam, but some said, I can't swim. So, so they grabbed on. to little pieces and held on to whatever they could till they got to the seashore. Now, 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 stay with me, stay with me. That means that on the seashore, there were two groups of folk. There was a group that got to safety holding on to little pieces. They didn't have the whole ship. They just had pieces of it. They didn't have everything they set sail with. They just had a little something, something. They didn't earn everything they were earning before it started, but they made it safely with the little bit that they had. And they could thank God that I may not have the whole ship, but I made it with some broken pieces. I wish I had some broken pieces saint in here who can testify I didn't get it all, but the little bit that I had carried me through and I made it by the grace of God. And you've got to accept that when the ship falls apart, you're not going to get the whole ship. You've got to learn to live with less. You may have started with a six-bedroom house, and you're going to land in a two-bedroom apartment, but you're going to make it. You may have set sail in a Benz, and you're going to pull up next Sunday in a Buick, but you made it. You used to wear Prada on your feet. Now you shop at Payless, but you made it. You used to vacation in the Grand Cayman. Now you go to the Grand Canyon, but you made it. You used to lay down in the Ritz Carlton, and now you thank God for the red roof, but you're just blessed to the Lord that I made it on some little pieces. Okay, okay, okay. Uh -huh. okay. I I'm going to tell you why only about five folks stood up. Because this is Alfred Street. And you don't come to Alfred Street on cutbacks. And pride will have you make a bad decision. Here's the question you've got to ask. I ask those who have broken pieces, it's real simple. Would you rather be on the whole ship that's breaking apart and drowning, or would you rather be safe on the beach with a little something something? It's really a simple question. Would you rather have it all and be in hell, or would you rather have a little something and walk with the joy of the Lord? Can I preach right here? It's better to go to sleep in peace in two bedrooms than to live in hell with six, and somebody can thank God that you made it with a little something. I wish I had a Bible reader that knew the same Paul that made it on broken pieces was the Paul that said, I've learned whatever state I'm in to be content. If I got it all, I'm content. If I ain't got nothing, I'm content. If I'm employed, I'm content. If I'm looking for a job, I'm content. Because I can do all things through. Uh. Watch this, watch this. Ooh, but if that made you shout, this is going to make you holler. Mark, there were some that got there on broken pieces. But there were also some on the seashore who were empty-handed. There were some who made it to the seashore. Lisa and they didn't have nothing. No part of the ship to hold on to. They made it with nothing from the ship. Now, what you ought to be asking right here is why come they were empty-handed? Because these were the ones who were strong enough to jump off and swim. Th 
These were the ones who, when the ship was falling apart, they jumped off the ship and declared, we don't need nothing from the ship. These are the ones that said, we don't need no broken peace. We don't need no handout. We don't need to beg you for nothing. You ain't got to give me nothing. Just let me get the hell off this thing so I can make it if I got to make it by myself. I wish I had some swimmers in here that declared I just am glad to get off that thing. I didn't need nothing. I didn't beg for nothing. I'm not dependent on you. I made it because I can. Now, 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 the only people who can make it with nothing and still be happy are people, watch this, who have redefined victory. Because when the ship's falling apart, you've got to redefine what winning looks like. That winning ain't getting the whole ship. Winning isn't getting everything you asked for. Winning is making it to the seashore and not be crazy. Winning is getting out the water and realizing you made it with nothing. Winning is just thanking God you can lay your head down at night and go to sleep and not be worried about what tomorrow is going to bring. Winning just means that I still have joy in my heart. After all the hell I've been through, I still show up every Sunday, lift up my hand, and thank God that I made it through my storm. Because uh, when the ship is falling apart, You've got to be content with cutbacks. You're not going to walk away with everything, but you're going to walk away. Let me give you this last one. I'm, I'm, I'm done. It's time to go. Uh. Be cautious and careful of your counsel. Be consistent in your character. Take care of your physical condition. Be content with cutbacks. But watch this last one that Paul says, and when things are falling apart, be confident that your journey will continue. Bobby, put my mic back on. I said be confident that this ain't the end of your story. Know in your heart that the shipwreck is not the last chapter of your biography. That the Lord is so good that the shipwreck doesn't stop the journey. Can I prove it to you? Bible says, when you get to chapter 28, that Paul and them landed on Malta. They were shipwrecked for three months. And after three months, when winter had passed, they realized that another ship had docked at Malta that was on its way to Rome that they got on. Okay, you missed it. They're shipwrecked for three months. And when winter is over, they find out another ship had docked on the same island and was headed in the same direction and they got on board. Okay, say third time is a charm. They were shipwrecked and they waited three months only to find out that another ship was on the island going where they were headed. They found out what I came to preach to you today. God always has another ship. Hey, God always has another vessel. God always has another way to get you where God said you were going to go. Why are you upset about the ship that was wrecked when God has another ship waiting on you? Hey, I feel like shouting right there. I want you to know God always has another. Another what? Another whatever you need. He's got another job. He's got another opportunity. He's got another man. He's got another woman. He's got another opportunity to bless you. God always has another. Can I shout you real quick? Kevin, not only does he have another, I would suggest to you, without fear of successful contradiction, that he also has better. Boy, somebody, if you caught that in your spirit, you would have knocked your neighbor's wig off right there. That, 
God always has better. Hmm, watch this. The ship they got on had survived the winter because they had enough good sense to know you don't sail in the winter. This ship was smarter than the first ship. This ship had survived what the first ship couldn't. This ship had people with discernment, whereas the first ship had folk that didn't know what God was up to. And when Paul looked at it, he said, listen, that first ship didn't make it, but this one is a better ship because God's next is always better than God's last. Can I make you say amen right there? Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. Wish I had a Bible reader. The good things God has in store for you. Uh, uh, he's got another. He's got better. Now watch this, watch this. This is so deep, I pray you get it. Um, when they get on the second ship that's better than the first, they sail without a storm. They get to Rome in record time. And remember, Paul is going to Rome because he's got to stand in the face of the emperor. He's got a court date. But when he gets to Rome, he's got to wait two years in Rome before his court date. And while he's there, he testifies about Jesus and folk get saved. Don't miss it. He's got a court date, but he's been shipwrecked. But when he gets on the next ship, when he gets to Rome, he still has two years to preach Jesus before his court date. Okay, you ain't catch it, I'm gonna make it real simple. He was shipwrecked, but he didn't miss his court date. He was shipwrecked, but didn't lose no time. He was shipwrecked, but didn't miss anything because even though the ship caused a delay, it did not create a denial. Come, 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 come here, come here, come here, come here. Let me tell you why you ought to press amen. Because when things fall apart, you start to get angry thinking about the time you wasted on that ship. When things fall apart, you get mad that somebody took years of your life from you doing what you could have done then and now you got to try to do now. When things fall apart, you begin to wonder, can God do it at this stage when I wish God had did it back then? But I'm coming by to tell you that no matter what your shipwreck and no matter how long your delay, God is a redeemer of your time. Uh, somebody say God is a redeemer. Now, now, somebody, you don't know what that means, so I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you understand how God is a redeemer. I am very active in my son's AAU basketball team. I go to every practice. I take them to every game. And because I am so faithful, the coach calls upon me during the game to run the game clock. Now, if you've never been on AAU, one parent from one team runs the clock, and another parent keeps the book. My job is to start and stop the clock when the referee blows the whistle and to put the points on the game clock. It's complicated, but I do it well. <laughs> when the ref blows the whistle, I stop the clock. When he blows it again, I start the clock. That's my job for the whole game. <laughs> Two weeks ago, we were at a tournament and the game was very close. As a matter of fact, with one minute left, we were tied. The opposing team inbounded the ball, pushed the ball up court. We played great defense, only for one little boy to throw up the luckiest shot I have ever seen in basketball. <laughs> the basket goes in, we're down by two, and there's only 13 seconds left on the clock. The clock is running. The other team jumps up cheering. Their mamas and daddies are up cheering. I have an attitude. Because there's only a few seconds left on the clock. But I noticed that our coach has been calling timeout. The ref didn't hear it 
because everybody was shouting. When the ref saw our coach calling timeout, he blew the whistle, I stopped the clock. Now there are only six seconds on the clock. We're down by two, and it doesn't look like we're going to win. The ref came over to me, and he said, put seven seconds back on the clock. I do what I'm told. I put time back on the clock. We inbounded the ball. My son stood outside the three-point line where he knows to shoot. They passed him the ball, and he did what daddy taught him how to do. He shot that thing. <laughs> that ball went in, and we won by one point. When the game was over, the other coach was furious. She came over to the ref and said there were only six seconds on the clock. That should not have counted. The ref said, I noticed that the coach was calling timeout. But because I couldn't hear him, I had to affect the lag time rule, which says that because I'm the ref, I can put time back on the clock even when you thought you had already lost. Can I tell you about the God we serve, that no matter what it looks like, he's well able to put time back on your clock. I wish I had a witness here that the Lord will add days to your life. He'll add seasons to your life. He'll give you more time because he puts time back on the clock. If you know he's able, give him a praise right here. If you know he's done it, wave a hand right here. Hey! Hey! hey. Come on, if, if you're not able, won't you stand? Look, things are falling apart, but you don't have to. Start taking care of yourself. Stop being angry that you didn't get everything you wanted from the ship. Be grateful that you made it to the shore. And don't worry about what time you feel you've lost. Do you not know that a thousand years are as but one day to God? God redeems your time. If you started 50 but you should have started at 30, God can still make it work. He redeems the time. And Lord, I thank you that even when the ship was falling apart, you sustained me. When the ship fell apart, you showed me you had another. It was better, and I didn't lose anything. So Lord, I pray over my brother, I pray over my sister that's going through a shipwreck right now. Now's not the time to give up, brother. Now's not the time to change your character, sister. Now's the time to trust God. Because when things fall apart, you don't have to. In Jesus' name.